Hi everybody, I'm Alex. I've done a lot of garden videos on Instagram, TikTok, all the rest. I'm a meteorologist here on Long Island and I'm gonna start doing some videos for YouTube too. These videos are gonna be really casual. You see my vacuum, I'm trying to clean up my house as I uh, kind of maneuver my way around my tropical plants. A lot of these are anxiously waiting for spring and especially for summer, but I'm gonna take a look outside, show you what things are like in the middle of winter, a few of my favorite plants right now. So I'm going to give you a little tour right now, starting off with my corny line. These are often sold as spike plants. They fill up planters during the summertime, and a lot of times they won't quite survive the winter here. So Cordyline Australis is cold tolerant to about 15 degrees before it starts to show damage. What I do is I wrap up my green one that you see in the ground here and cover it in Christmas lights. And this beautiful variegated one goes into the garage when temperatures drop below about 25 degrees or so because that one's a little less cold tolerant. But how about if you're looking for flowers? Yeah, even in January when a lot of times the ground is rock solid because it's so cold out, you can still have some blooms. These are hellebores, which I absolutely adore. They're in full bloom right now. We've had a very mild start to January here on Long Island, and these plants are taking full advantage of it. But even when it's cold, bitter, bitter cold outside during the winter, these green leaves remain, and the flower buds usually do also. So I'm obsessed with hellebores, and during mild winters like this one so far, there are some viburnums that do really well. If you're looking for a bigger impact in your garden, I really adore my lever leaf viburnum. It has semi evergreen leaves. Basically, if it's a mild winter, it stays totally green. Otherwise, it drops some of its leaves and it will bloom sometime, usually November or December, and it'll just keep on going. It'll bloom again in the summer. It's ridiculous how much flower power this plant has, and it looks so pretty. I don't love uh, Camellia sesquana. It's just, I don't know, it does bloom, and I'm happy that it's been blooming since December, kind of on and off, but it doesn't have a lot of buds. And I just rather wait for the Gyponas to start blooming because those have bigger leaves, as you can see, and the blooms are really pretty. So I can't wait to share those with you soon. I actually am starting to learn to appreciate some bare foliage in the garden, like these hydrangeas. I just let the dried up flowers kind of do their thing all winter long. And when it snows, it looks really pretty. But behind this, this Akuba japonica are just so colorful, so vibrant, and it stays like this all winter long, all summer long, it looks exactly the same. It's cold tolerant down to about five degrees Fahrenheit before it starts to show damage, but it can handle colder than that too. And what I love about this plant is its resilience to full shade. This part of the garden never sees sunshine, ever, never. And it still has beautiful, beautiful leaves. A huge plus, no doubt. This is only my second year back here in New York. I moved away from New York because I hated winter so much and spent seven years gardening in the South and loved it. But now that I'm back, long story short, a lot of my plants are still babies in my yard, including my cold tolerant palm trees. This is a needle palm, which I actually got at a very large size because they are so slow growing. It's the most cold tolerant palm in the world. However, I always get damaged the first year or two from it. You can even see some damage from last year, and it really wasn't very cold last year. I had a lot of surprising plants come back last year. Uh, but the good news is that it produces babies, and the trunk, although the main one can die when temperatures get even down to like 10 degrees Fahrenheit during its first winter or two, I've had that happen, Eventually, it becomes really resilient to cold and can survive brief drops down to zero or even a little bit colder than that. But it doesn't like doing that every winter. I actually find, though, that sable miners are a little bit of a better choice for my garden here on Long Island. I find that they look prettier. The leaves, the fronds, they just don't get tattered up as much when it's windy out like the needle palm does. And it can handle sun, shade. It's really easy. It's the only palm that I don't worry about during the winter time. 
I've had one at my parents' house for over 10 years. At first, it would get damaged, but now it doesn't anymore. So I think that's proof that the longer that you have some of these smaller growing palms, the deeper that their roots get into the ground and just the better overall that they're gonna be at surviving the winter. For the trunking palms like windmills, I haven't really noticed a lot of improved cold tolerance with age, but the really shrubby ones tend to just get better and better with age when it comes to cold tolerance. I only have so much space in my house for my tropical plants, so I overwinter a lot of them in the garage and just pull them out anytime the weather's kind of mild. And you'd be surprised at some of the plants that can actually do really well, even on cold days like this. So this one behind me is a Chamaidora microspotty. This palm tree is sometimes known as a bamboo palm. It's not aggressive like bamboo is, but it actually can grow pretty quickly. This is the only palm tree that has ever been self fertile for me and produced seedlings here in New York. I've never had any of our palm trees actually produce seedlings. And yet here it is outside in January looking super tropical and it's very healthy. It can survive snow like it did last year. It can survive temperatures easily down to about 25 degrees before I start to even consider really bringing it inside. Anything colder than 25, I really don't like to leave it exposed because it's in a pot. But if you live in a southern climate, this palm can briefly survive drops down to 15 at least and be okay. But other palms, like my queen palm behind me, which loves and thrives in sunshine, it can't handle really sustained freezes, but it can handle cold temperatures and nights down to about I would say easily 30 before I start worrying about it. I think once we get into the 20s, it's a little borderline risky for queen palms. I have seen them survive it here very often, but I wanna keep it looking good. Uh, but the reason why I keep this outside and not inside is because inside the house, it suffers from spider mites and usually just sort of withers and dies. It is not a good indoor palm. I think because the leaflets are so fine and there's so many of them, I leave it outside any opportunity I can during the winter. And that's kind of my trick for other plants too, like citrus. Citrus are surprisingly resilient when they are not in fruit and when they are not actively growing. So if you often read news headlines about hard freezes in Florida and how it destroys the citrus crop, that's because that is their prime time to fruit. But there are some cold tolerant varieties like my Owari Setsuma mandarin. They have a shorter time that they need to ripen and that's really, really good because it fruits before the weather gets cold and so I can leave it outside for a good chunk of a winter. I bring it in along with my Ponderosa lemon and my Meyer lemon. I bring these inside when temperatures are getting close to 30 degrees Fahrenheit at night. So it is exposed to light frosts and freezes. I don't like to leave it in the house all winter because when I do leave it in the house during the winter time, it thinks it's spring, it starts blooming and it starts growing new leaves. And then the leaves don't have any of the requirements that they need to do well and they all start dropping off and it looks terrible. And if it does flower and produce, then I mean, there's not a lot of pollination happening in the house. So I try and keep these plants dormant as long as possible. I really do love having these kind of borderline cold tolerant plants grow in pots. So Fatsia japonica will survive the winter here if it's in the ground. If it's in a pot and temperatures get down to about like 15 degrees or so, then we can really see significant damage because, and this goes with any plant, the pots expose the roots to a lot more cold than they would be used to in the ground. So you need to kind of shave off about 10 degrees of cold tolerance if you're growing something in a pot. So why am I growing this in a pot? Well, the benefit is, is that I can move it around. So during the summertime, maybe I let it sort of sit in the background. All right, I know we talked a lot about potted plants, but I wanted to show you a few in the ground that I don't worry about and I really like. This is a yucca, it's from Plant Delights. It's called Silver Anniversary. And what I love about this plant is just this sort of like off gray 
looking almost bluish tint that the leaves have. Uh, it's kind of cool. It's a fun yucca and it's nice and soft, just sort of like yucca recurvifolia is, which does very well here as well. Yucca gloriosa is a very pretty looking plant and it does have good cold tolerance. It's another native to the United States. However, um, I'm going to kind of like make this look ugly for a second, this video, but I want to show you what's happening to this plant now that we've had so much rain. It hasn't gone cold yet, but you're seeing the spots, right? Um, the coldest temperature is 24, so that's not very cold for this yucca. It can handle below 10 Fahrenheit easy, uh, but it gets this kind of weird spotting when it's not in full sun or if it gets too much rain. So just a little heads up on that. I love windmill palms. They're my favorite by far, even though I've talked up the needle and the sable minor palm. You just can't beat that trunk on a windmill palm, but unfortunately, it's not reliably cold tolerant here on Long Island. It can survive in a sheltered spot and do really well for years, but um, in this spot in particular, where it's just open sesame for cold air, I do need to cover it up most years. I cover up my windmill palms when temperatures get below about 15 or so just to be safe because I want it to look nice and green. I don't want to have a plant that doesn't look good in my front yard, but it can survive colder. So just a, just a heads up. I actually do have another palm that does really well in pots and this is a Livestona chilinensis. So this is a super cheap, easy palm that you can get from a local nursery usually. And what I love about it is the beautiful glossy foliage. I know this isn't a good example. This one has been through the ringer. These old leaves are from drought damage last two years ago, uh, but all the new leaves are really, really healthy on it. So it's done much better this year. And it's not because of cold that it has any damage. I mean, look at all the new growth. Fantastic new growth on this. Let's see if I can spin it around. Anyway, so this is a young plant because again, I moved back to New York just two years ago. So I'm starting off from scratch, got it on discount. It wasn't really very happy when I even bought it in the first place, but now it's got some great new growth. Cold tolerant down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's it. And then you lose every single frond. However, I have actually grown it in the ground with protection for many years when I lived at home when I was younger and um, it was on Staten Island and it would come back as a perennial. Eventually I lost it because I moved away and I just couldn't cover it. But um, now I got one again and maybe I'll try it in the grounds one day. Oh, but one thing before, um, <laughs> before I move on to the next plant, watch out for these spines. This plant will get you. Also experimenting with a very cool palm tree. This is a sable urasana. It is a blue sable palmetto-ish kind of palm. It's not really a sable palmetto, but it has that same look and it is blue. I am so excited to have this in the ground for the first time ever. It's been in a pot for many, many years. And um, yeah, I, I think it's time to experiment with it because sables do not like being in the ground, in uh, pots, they need to be in the ground because their roots are incredibly deep. Uh, but it is not cold tolerant. It's probably similar cold tolerance to a sable palmetto, which is about 15 degrees in my cold winter climate. Although in the southeast, they can handle a lot colder weather because the sun is a lot more intense and it, the cold just doesn't last as long. One more flower I really love are pansies. These are so easy to start from seed and um, they bloom really all winter long. I do bring this inside the garage when temperatures get below about 25 degrees. So it has not been brought in once yet and it still looks fantastic. This is the blue European fan palm I was talking about before. It's much more cold tolerant than the green variety, but it also does like it really hot and sunny during the summertime. Uh, the pansies on the other hand, love love this time of the year the flowers are edible it looks so pretty right now it's a little bit beat up because we have had so much rain and so much wind but i absolutely adore growing these out of all of the annuals that i grow pansies flower the longest i start them in september and they usually bloom until june or even july sometimes and they put on their best show when you grow them 
in the fall and just bring them in the garage or something when it gets cold during the winter time because it's establishing good roots. If you buy these as little plugs during the spring, they're not going to have big roots, uh, whereas these have a very nice network of roots. So as soon as the weather warms up, they just look amazing. If you want the best pansies ever, buy them in the autumn. And if you live in a cold climate, just bring it in and out throughout the winter time. Or if you're in a climate like New York um, City, you know, in Long Island, some winters, you just let them be and they do bloom all winter long. I, I've not brought these inside yet. And despite our ridiculous rain and wind, they really do still look very good. All right, so I'm just gonna end the video here for now. I'm gonna see you all soon. Uh, coming up, by the way, later on, we're talking about, um, by we, I mean me. I'm so used to saying we because I work for a team. Um, we, <laughs> just me. Um, that's my favorite thing about gardening is that it's time for me to just be with me sometimes. Um, but anyway, here's what's coming up. I'm going to talk about, um, how I'm transforming my front yard into a little vegetable garden. I'm going to talk a little bit about, um, my house plants. I'm talking about how I cover up my palm trees for winter weather when it gets cold out what do i do with my palm trees here how do i get them looking nice uh, but anyway see ya thanks for listening to me and if you did get to this point in the video let me know what you want to see and if you didn't get to this point in the video then you can let me know too but you just wouldn't know that i asked for it because you didn't get to this point and i don't blame you for not getting to this point because this is going, how do you end a video on YouTube? Oh my gosh. This is why we have time limits in news. Because I could just go on and on.